A lot has happened to the Boston Celtics this summer, so we turn to an NBA veteran, an NBA champion, and Locked On Network analyst Antonio Daniels to break everything down. Get his take right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team, step back. We gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry OB. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how I started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics, pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. I want to thank you so much for making this show part of your regular routine. This show is here for you three days a week for the next few weeks. In about three weeks, we're going to start going back to five days a week because that's when media day is going to be coming. That's when training camp is going to open. The season is around the corner. It's already back. So uh, we'll go to five days a week once that happens. And then... Uh, until then, I should say, three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Today on the Wednesday show, Antonio Daniels, who is a 13-year NBA veteran, an NBA champion, and the Locked On Network NBA analyst to get into Jalen Brown, the rumors, how to deal with that with him, the Celtics signings, Danilo, Danilo Gallinari, which this was recorded before the injury. So some of the stuff that obviously will not be referenced in there but his importance and ultimately what he'll mean to this team is, is certainly part of this, this podcast and the Malcolm Brogdon signing and Malcolm Brogdon taking a step back. That's all part of this discussion here. I'm John Corrales. I cover the Celtics for Boston sports journal. I've written a book called the Boston Celtics, all time all-stars. I'm in my 16th season now covering the Boston Celtics. So uh, lots of time around the team for me. Today's show is brought to you by bet online Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, more odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online is where the game starts. So let's just get into it. Part one of my conversation. I'm going to spread this out over three segments and then react to some of the things that he said. Right now, it's going to be about Jalen Brown, the trade rumors, and not just the, the rumors. Who cares about the rumors anymore? But how did they impact him? How do you deal with that with him? Interesting perspective right now from Antonio Daniels. Welcome back to the show, Antonio Daniels, 13-year NBA vet, NBA champion. Uh, how are you feeling today, Antonio? I am blessed, John. How you doing, brother? I'm doing great, as always. Appreciate you coming on again. Uh, let's just dive into it because uh, we've been talking all summer long about trade rumors and a lot of stuff about the <laughs> Celtics. And, yeah. you know, I try to offer my perspective, but uh, you played in the league. You've been involved in trades. You've been involved in rumors. Let's hear it from you firsthand. What's it like? First of all, just hearing your name in the rumors. When the when the rumors come around and you're on an NBA team, what's that uncertainty like? To <clears throat> put it honestly, I think a lot of it depends on the time of season it is. Mm -hmm. I think there's a drastic difference between being in trade rumors in the summertime and being in trade rumors while you're entrenched in the season. Um, when you look at the situation that transpired this summer in Brooklyn, the trickle down effect and everybody that impacted, in particular, Jalen Brown, right? Derek White, uh, Marcus Smart, different guys whose names, Grant Williams, were involved in trade rumors. The thing you have to understand as a player, and the sooner you come to the understanding that this is a business, the better off you'll be. Mm -hmm. Now, I say that to say this. <clears throat> Organizations will always do what's in their best interest. As a player, you have to understand that. Go back and look throughout the course of history of guys that have been traded. Some of the best players in the history of the sport have been traded. Some of the best players in the history of the sport have been moved. If I'm Jalen Brown, am I upset? No. Like, is there really any shame in being involved in a trade rumor where that trade would have bought in one of the three best and most talented and skilled players in the league? No, you have to understand that's a part of the business that comes along with the territory. That's not a direct reflection on you. 
And on the other side, you also realize that if you were traded, Brooklyn was trying to acquire you because they understood your talent as somebody that could be a cornerstone of their franchise moving forward as well. So I think is it depends on the mentality that you have. And from what I've seen and what I've heard from Jalen Brown, he is such an old soul. He gets it. Mm -hmm. He does, man. He gets it. And you can't say that about guys that are his age. He really understands and grasps what the NBA is all about. It's refreshing to see. And and it feels like there's a difference, especially when it comes to Jalen, that a difference between being shopped and the Celtics are saying we are looking to trade Jalen Brown and let's hear the offers versus Kevin Durant asks for a trade. And when the Celtics call, Brooklyn says, well, you know, it's going to take Jalen Brown. And that's the discussion where the Celtics, I think just in general, we do not want to trade Jalen Brown would be their stance. But when Kevin Durant comes, comes along, you got to talk and see what it would take. So I think for Jalen, does that make a difference where, hey, you know, you the Celtics can go to you and be like, hey, you, we, it was Kevin Durant and, and your name came up, but we don't want to move you. And, and ultimately we didn't. We decided to keep you. If we wanted to move you, we would have. And, and we chose you over Kevin Durant. I, if the Celtics need to mend a fence, you think that's an effective way to mend that fence? But I think the effective way, honestly, to mend the fence is to be honest. Yeah. Is to be honest. And from a professional, from a man's perspective, I want honesty. Mm -hmm. I want honesty. If, if you're, if you're going to tell me, don't tell me something that isn't true. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, if I come into that office and we sit down man to man, face to face, tell me the truth. You know what? If Kevin Durant didn't withdraw his trade request from Brooklyn, we may have moved you. All right, that's fine. Because the fact of the matter is that didn't happen. But tell me the truth, though. Don't mm -hmm. lie to me. As a man, as a professional, don't lie to me. Keep it 100 with me. Keep it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that you don't value what I bring to this organization. That doesn't mean that you don't value um, what I bring to the the Boston Celtics community and fan base? No, not at all. Not at all. But we also have to understand the business side of this and the fact that organizations are going to do what they feel can take their team to that next level. Mm -hmm. And again, if I'm in a trade rumor that centers around Kevin Durant, with all due respect, there is no shame in that. They mm -hmm. weren't talking about moving Jalen Brown for just anyone. They were talking about moving Jalen Brown for one of the best players to ever lace him up, you know? And the fact of the matter is they didn't. So now once you can put that behind you and move forward with truth and honesty, now you can work on building on what you guys did last year, which was make it all the way to the NBA Finals. I think this is such an interesting perspective from a guy who's been there, from a guy who's been traded and who's heard his name in rumors before. The... Be honest. And it's funny because I think I and when I had Tom Westerf Westerholm on the show and everybody, if you listen to any of the other podcasts, we're all kind of thinking of ways to sort of spin it with Jalen that we could go and say, hey, Jalen, man, we chose you. And that's yes, yes, that could be said. However, I think Jalen can sit there and say, yeah, you, you chose me, but let's. Let's cut through the the bull, right? Let's cut through. You you did mention my name, right? Like, I think he can go to Brad and say, Brad, honestly, look me in the eyes and tell me that you and Sean Marks didn't at least have a conversation that include included me. And then Brad Stevens is just gonna have to be honest with him. And I think that honesty, that hundred percent honesty, would be appreciated and say, Hey, look, this is it is what it is. It's not that we wanted to trade you. It's that we wanted to talk and see if we wanted if we could get KD. And hey, it's Kevin Durant. And ultimately it didn't work. It's not what it's not we weren't willing to do certain things, but yeah, you know, it was Kevin Durant. We talked about you. And that's that's the business of it, but ultimately you're here and we want you here. We weren't just going to throw you away. I think you can honestly say to to Jalen Brown if we wanted to trade you, we could have traded you, but we didn't want to go 
that far with this. So we value you so highly that we think treating you and like one other guy is equal to Ke- Kevin Durant, which I think, again, is kind of a compliment because I think Jalen can sit there and say, all right, I'm no Kevin Durant, right? Like you got to be honest with yourself in this moment. Like Jalen can say, I'm no Kevin Durant. Kevin Durant's one of like top, top five guys. I'm not a top five guy. Maybe someday I can get there. That's my goal. I think I can get there, but I think he has to be honest and say, look, if you can get KD, you can get KD. I, I think this is now the subjective part. I understand that my name's going to be in there. And frankly, if you're, if you're saying it's me and you're not giving up a ton of things with me that you think I'm so good that it's me plus one other guy. And that that's it to get to KD. That says a lot. That says a lot. And, and we can like you and I can go back and forth about that. You can comment in the YouTube comments and say, John, you're full, full of crap. But I think from a professional perspective, and this is what Antonio is talking about, the pro, the people who understand this is a business, that this is a job. I think those people involved, Brad Stevens, Jalen Brown, understand the mechanics of this. So be upfront, be honest, and let's cut through the BS. Let's cut through all of the stuff that uh, people like me had been kind of throwing out there and say, oh, wait, let's uh, let's see if, you know, maybe we spin it this way, spin it that way. No spin, just talk. All right, up next, the additions of Malcolm Brogdon and Danilo Gallinari. We found out a little bit of Danilo Gallinari's time frame, how long he's going to miss. I'll talk about that when I come back, and we'll get to more of the Antonio Daniels interview after I talk to you about Bet Online, your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. NFL is back. Preseason is basically over. Uh, the first game of the season is around the corner. College football is back. This is the biggest betting thing. People love to bet on football. So you can find all of your latest developments, whatever football league you follow, college or the pros, matchups, news, podcasts, all including this year's opening week's games at Bet Online. It's your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, scores, more in MLB, MMA, golf. It's the fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite sports and events. So head on over to the website today. You can use your mobile device to do it and learn more about the trends in action. Bet online is where the game starts. Please gamble responsibly. Hey, thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. It's your team every day on the Locked On Podcast Network. Check out Locked On NBA. Make that your second listen. Locked On NBA, hosted by me, and Jake Madison of Locked On Pelicans on Wednesdays. So we have already recorded the Wednesday show before I hopped on to do this show. So Wednesday Locked On NBA has to do with the R.J. Barrett extension in New York and how that effectively ended the talks between Utah and New York for Donovan Mitchell. And then we get into the uh, ESPN survey of coaches, executives, and scouts. Uh, some interesting things there involving the Celtics, involving the Warriors, involving the Milwaukee Bucks, and some others. So check out Locked On NBA wherever you get your podcast. You can even watch a show on YouTube. Wherever you found Locked On Celtics, you can find Locked On NBA. So part two of my conversation recorded uh, last week with Antonio Daniels. I wanted to get the NBA player reaction. So Antonio Daniels, 13 years in the league, won a championship. Now he's a Locked On analyst getting into now the Malcolm Brogdon edition and the Danilo Gallinari edition. Again, this was recorded before we uh, heard about the injury, before the injury to Gallinari. So he's talking about Gallo uh, in terms that don't jive with where we are now. Now we know that he's going to be out until November, which, by the way, not the worst news at all. He's going to miss training camp. That's going to set him back. He's going to miss the beginning of the season. That's going to set him back a little bit. But back in November is basically uh, almost the best case scenario. I think the best case would have been uh, a little bit earlier, but two months for him at this point, Celtics will be fine. You stop gap, maybe he's more Sam Hauser, maybe whatever. You don't have to go out and feel like you have to replace him. You're not going to go injury replacement. You're not going to go too nuts. Basically, just... 
hold down the fort. Then you get him in, you work him back in by Christmas. He should be fine. And that's really when you need him for. So that works. Great, great news for Gallinari. In the meantime, Antonio Daniels has his reaction to the moves, the additions of Gallo and the addition of Malcolm Brogdon. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about them building on what they did from last year. So Jalen Brown's going to stay. Uh, they have added Malcolm Brogdon. They've added Danilo Gallinari. I've been saying that as much as like we can talk about Brogdon in a second, but to me, the internal development for these guys is going to be the bigger driver of what gets them to the but, NBA finals again. Agreed. You know, they, they need to get Jalen and Jason and Marcus. They, they need to make steps forward. Do you think how easy is it or how hard is it for those guys to make those steps forward? shortened off season and all of that stuff. How do you, how do you go about adding to your game in that, in that short span and coming back that better player that the team needs to make that next finals run? Well, I'll say this. I think that all of the guys that you just mentioned will come back better players, period, because they have something that you can't expedite and that's experience, mm -hmm. you know, so we can talk about growing your game, which is something that you do in the summertime, making it all the way to the NBA finals going through a game seven versus the Miami Heat, going through a game seven versus the Milwaukee Bucks. Yeah, you can't expedite experience. You can't. You cannot teach it. And it sounds simplistic, but the only way to actually get experience is to experience it. Mm -hmm. So I think the Boston Celtics are going to come back a better team just because of the finals run and playoff experience that they got. But now when you start adding other pieces, though, when you start adding in a Malcolm Brogdon, when you start adding in Danilo Gallinari, what that gives you as far as options as a coach, Ime Udoka now has different buttons to push depending on matchups. Danilo Gallinari, I, I love Malcolm Brogdon. I think that that acquisition speaks for itself. But Danilo Gallinari could be a complete difference maker for mm -hmm. the Boston Celtics in today's NBA. Because you can play him at the five, you can play him at the four, you can play him at the three. He ain't got to worry about matching up with Shaquille O'Neal or Tim Duncan, you know, or Hakeem Olajuwon, those guys aren't around anymore unless you happen to match up with Joel Embiid in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. But outside of that, you are adding to your, your roster a 6'10", 6'11", shooter that has shot 38% or more from the three-point line over the last four seasons. When you put that around a Jalen Brown and a Jason Tatum, stars need space. Yeah. Stars need space to operate. When you have knockdown shooters like these guys, it makes the game more stress-free for guys like Daniel Gallinari, for guys like Marcus Smart, for guys like Al Horford. Boss is going to be a problem. They are going to be a problem. They are a problem this past year. And, you know, you can you can make the argument, well, Milwaukee, if, if they were healthy, if Chris Middleton, but it wasn't. Mm -hmm. It wasn't. They got a chance to experience a finals run. They are going to be a problem for years to come. That's for sure. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, it, it just make having Danilo out there certainly will make that that pass fake when you're driving make it a little bit more believable because that ball could go out there and you're afraid of that ball going out there. So the space certainly helps. Um, but when you talk about matching up against Joel and B, I mean Philly Philly made their moves. Uh, matching up against Joel Embiid is something that the Celtics might need to do. There's a lot of talk about backing up you, Horford and and Robert Williams. And how how important is it to have a guy that can actually go out there? Do you, do you need a big body to go up against Joel Embiid, or can you go with the guys that you have and, and just game plan around and just say, hey, look, it, it, Joel, we don't have we don't have a big body to to go up against Joel, and he's if he gets fifty, he gets fifty. We're just going to have to try and hold the rest of the guys to less than 50 and, 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 and do that. you think that can be an effective strategy? Or do they need we're, to go out and get a bigger guy? Well, John, I, I would say if you can acquire one, go get him. If you can acquire a – I'm just throwing names out there. A Hassan Whiteside, um, a, a Dwight Howard, somebody like that. A big to match up with a Joel B because you want to have options. You want to have options. That doesn't mean that th that's exactly where you're going to go if you happen to play Joel B or when you played the Denver Nuggets, whatever it may be with, with Dakota Jokic. You just want to have the option of that button to push just in case. Just yeah. in case. What, some of the best teams in this league, they can win both ways. 
They can win big and they can win playing small. And Boston now with the addition of Danilo Gallinari, now they actually have a lineup that they can put out there and play small ball. They can mm -hmm. actually play certain teams with Danilo Gallinari at the five. Mm -hmm. With Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum as your forwards. And then with Marcus Smart and Malcolm Brogdon in your backcourt. Today's NBA is no longer about a five, a four, a three, a two, and a one. It's positionless. And at the end of games, what you see teams doing is finishing games with their five best playmakers. Mm -hmm. So now with the ad addition of Danilo Gallinari, it does give you the option to go small, but you also want to have the option to go the other way if you need to. Obviously, I disagree with Antonio Daniels about some of the big men that he threw out there. I don't think, I don't think the Celtics need to go add any one of those people that he mentioned. However, very interesting. I didn't know that he was going to go so big on Gallinari. I think Gallinari is going to be good for the Celtics and a dangerous shooter out there. And like I said in the, in the interview, if Tatum is driving the lane and he pump fakes, it's somebody who is, who, who is checking Gallinari out there. You see that and you go, Oh, oh I have to, I have to react to that pump fake. So Tatum fakes and goes up for a finish. That's one less help defender out there. So I think that is going to be uh, a, a great element that Gallinari is going to bring again out till November returning in November. That's fine. Not ideal, but considering how it looked fine. So uh, not the worst news on Gallinari. I followed up on the Brogdon stuff asking what about Brogdon taking that step back, that sixth man role? How does, how, what does that mean to a veteran like Antonio Daniels? His answer is coming up next. Uh, let's, uh, cause I know we, we got to get you out of here pretty quickly here, but, um, you mentioned Brogdon before I've a lot of people talking about Brogdon here. Uh, taking that six-man role versus coming in and trying to replace a starter or anything like that. What do you make of a guy who has had a certain role over the course of his career now coming in and saying, hey, I, I am willing to take that that six-man role uh, versus starting uh, on this team? Call a professional. It's called a professional that, that gets and understands what winning is about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? He came from Milwaukee, you know, um, where culture was starting to get created there. Um, and when you're stepping into a situation where there's a good thing going already, it's not like Malcolm Brogdon is stepping to a Boston Celtics team that didn't make the playoffs last year or a Boston Celtics team that was eliminated first round. You're stepping into a situation where this Boston Celtics team made it to the NBA Finals. You know what your thought process is supposed to be? whatever you need me to do because mm -hmm. it's on me to entrench myself in your culture not on you guys to come to me but it's on me to fit in with you guys and that's what a true professional does and by what you said malcolm brogman basically saying i'm willing to come off the bench i'm cool you see other guys in other situations i will that will remain nameless that won't do that they step in like look i want to start because that's yeah. what i've always done Malcolm Brogdon is a ultimate professional and is a perfect pickup for the Boston Celtics as well. Well, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see the, the, the Brogdon as a backup, um, backup point guard, backup shooting guard, backup small forward. I think the versatility kind of yep. makes up for the, you know, it, maybe, maybe he's not starting, but, he's going to get his minutes and you know that Marcus is going to miss a couple of games and Jalen and Jason, he's going to get, I think, I think Brogdon's going to probably start like 25 games for the Celtics. So it's not like he's never going to start. He's, he's going to automatically built in because of rest and injuries. I bet you he's the guy that they go to as a starter. So I think that's more of a selling point for him. Like you, you can start for any of these guys uh, and, and still get plenty of starts and plenty of minutes. I, I'll tell you this. I think that so much in this league is made out of starting. And John, I'm going to tell you what my mom used to tell me all the time. She used to say, baby, it's not whether or not you start. A coach really shows how much he trusts you by whether or not you finish. Mm -hmm. Is he right? 
She's right. You know, different guys throughout the course of this league that may start games, but when it's winning time, they're not in the game. Mm -hmm. I would much rather finish a game than start a game. So I tell you one thing you can guarantee quite often, when it's time to close shop and finish that game off, Malcolm Brogdon, a lot of times, will be in that finishing lineup. I have a tendency to agree. I think I think that's going to be the case. All right, we'll let you go, uh, Antonio Daniels. Really appreciate uh, a few minutes of your time. Thanks for coming back on. We'll have you on, on again real soon. For sure. Appreciate you, John. Love Antonio Daniels' perspective on all of this. And the that reaction to Brogdon and coming off the bench that it's it's a professional he's a professional that gets it and understands what winning is about let's not just think about this in terms of hey that's great man he's willing to take a little bit of a step back an adjustment in role but yeah you know, he'll he'll start plenty but the, the adjustment in role it's really great to see that how about that impact on the locker room? How about Brogdon coming into that locker room? Who's already, he's already like a leadership kind of guy, right? He's out there. He's making a difference in his community. He's a strong guy. You can tell his strong character. He walks into that locker room saying, hey, you know what? I took a step back. I am coming off the bench and I'm Malcolm Brogdon. He would never say it like this, but. I think the rest of the team sees it. You know, you know, you know who Malcolm Brogdon is. If I'm in the NBA and I'm on a team and all of a sudden, hey, we just traded for Malcolm Brogdon, it's like, oh wow. Yes, that's a that's a good player. And so I know when he comes in, his reputation, I respect him as a vet, I respect him as a leader, as an all-star. I I respect, I respect him. So when he comes into the locker room, it's like and and if you're not, if you're a starter, especially if you're one of the younger guys, if you're, I keep saying Tatum and Brown are younger. They're young, but they're 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 veterans basically. But Malcolm Brogdon has the years on on them. If they're if they're not where they need to be in the headspace, he can he can go up to them and be like, "Hey, I didn't come here to come off the bench to watch you guys do whatever it is that you're doing out there." If it even comes to that, but. He, he has the cachet to go up to them and be like, uh, no, no. If you guys are going to do that, then I didn't come here to come off the bench to, to kind of mess around here. I came here to come off the bench because you guys are what you are and you're finalists and you had a lead in the NBA finals. Like I wanted to be the guy that got you over that hump, but not like this. Not if you guys are going to be acting like this. Again, I'm, I don't expect that to come to pass for the Celtics. But he can, he has that, that, that gravitas in the locker room where basically anybody on that team, if he comes up to him, he's like, hey, no, I don't think so. That person's got to be like, oh, you know what? You know, maybe Malcolm Brogdon's right. Like it's, it is kind of that veteran leadership that the Celtics, another veteran leader that the Celtics can really lean on. So uh, I I like that. I like the fact that that attitude, that j just Antonio Daniels' reaction there, who he just he just kind of you can kind of tell he's just like, you know what, that's a pro, and he just that demeanor. You're like he's not analyzing at that at that point. You can tell that Antonio is just kind of like you know what I appreciate his professionalism. I appreciate that. So that's what I expect to go into the Celtics locker room should be fun. Uh, I appreciate Antonio's uh, perspective on all of these things. I thought uh, with the opportunity to talk to him for a few minutes and get his take, I thought that level of perspective on all of the things that have happened this summer uh, was, was very helpful. I think it's very helpful to kind of recalibrate how we look at the Jalen Brown trade rumor situation to recalibrate how we look at Malcolm Brogdon status on this team. So uh, I thought it was really great. I appreciate him coming on and doing that. I appreciate you listening and watching the show, uh, listening to and watching the show. So uh, thank you. If you are a subscriber, very, very much appreciate that. If you're here and you have not subscribed yet, hope that means that you like the show and it's time to hit that subscribe button, whether it's on the podcast or on the YouTube channel. Hope that you enjoy it enough 
so you can subscribe. This way, you know, whenever a new show drops, it's going to be right there on your device. You get the notification and you can listen to the show. You can watch the show. Uh, appreciate you watching on YouTube. YouTube channel has, has really been getting the, we're close to 8,000. Uh, so I'd love to get to 8,000. I think if we can get to 10 by the end of the year, it'd be really great. Maybe more, maybe we get to more. We'll see how that goes. So share the podcast. That's really going to help me. If you share the podcast, tell your friends, tell your family, tell everyone that they should be listening to and watching the lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the lockdown podcast network, your team every day.